Welcome to a tutorial video for the static page scraper. So this is an update to the original video which I created on YouTube quite a few months ago. So before we begin, what is the difference between the static page scraper and the dynamic page scraper tool which appears at the bottom? So on paper, both of them will scrape a website. The big difference is the static page only downloads the source of the website while the dynamic page will actually load up the site into a real web browser which means the dynamic page is able to run JavaScript so if you have a website which loads content dynamically then the dynamic page scraper will find that content where if you only use the static page scraper all you're going to do is download the source of the page but it's going to be missing content that is the page wasn't able to load its own JavaScript and therefore unable to dynamically load up the content. So a good example is on Facebook when you scroll down your page feed you'll notice that it continuously loads new items each time you hit the bottom of that scroll page. So this is content that's been dynamically loaded onto that site. If you were to copy and paste Facebook's URL into the static page scraper you might find it's not loading any of that content on that page because the actual source code doesn't contain content but requires you to load everything up onto a real web page first. So with that out of the way we can go into the static page scraper. Now the big reason you want to use static page scraping is because you're not having to download and run dynamic code. It's a lot quicker to go through pages of content that you know are included in the source code. So for example Wikipedia is going to scrape and download much quicker if you use the static page scraper than if you were to use the dynamic page. I have opened the static page scraper so here are all your properties and tools. For today's example I am going to use a page from Wikipedia so URLs to download you want to put each unique URL on its own line so here I've put a page to Wikipedia Save location, it's going to save to SEO Content Machine's own project folder. Of course, if you want to save it to your hard drive, select folder button here and open up a folder browser where you can select which folder to use. I'm going to click on project folder and paste it back in. Now I can choose how to name the articles that are saved on my hard drive. By default, it's going to use the URL of the page, which would mean ABC here. You could also choose to use optionally the title of the page, the job name which is here, or you also have two other macros which will either increment a counter or put a random number and you might need a random number if the page titles are going to be non-unique. Next we go down to the page element selection section. So this is where we choose what content we want to grab from that page. So I'm going to copy this URL and by default it's only going to grab the h1 tag, the h2 tag and any paragraphs. Now I can test what this looks like. If I go down to the CSS selector test area we have the URL. I'm going to click on the extract button and here it's gone and downloaded the source code from that URL. If you look closely you see it's only downloaded h2 and paragraph tags. There's a h1 up here. I can preview what this looks like in the browser by clicking on the preview tab. So this is just the content. We can convert all HTML to plain text. At the same time, once it's in plain text, we can choose to wrap each line with a tag or some other bit of code. There is reg and replace tool, which means that we can find any content on that page, such as the word ABC. And if we use this symbol here, we want to maybe replace that with CVA. As an example, you can run an article translator onto the final content. You can also run a rewriter on the content. If you are using a rewriter, you also have the option to either save the spin text symbol or if you just want plain text, no spin text is also an option. Like most tasks now in SEO Content Machine Next, you also have the chain task feature here. What this means is once this task is completed running, maybe you wanted to run the XML generator and create XML 
import files for content downloaded by this tool as an example. I'm going to actually turn it off by selecting the blank space. So once again, URLs, our content, and this section here on remove tags. So if I were to go back to the source and give you an example, I see that sometimes we have bold. And let's say, for example, we don't want those kind of tags to appear in our content. So I can click extract again. And you notice that anything in B has been removed. And if I were to preview it, that content now has been removed. In addition to just flat out removing tags, we have the ability to remove tags containing a certain text. You can click on each of these individual blue links and it will actually load up a help page which goes to the jQuery selectors tag listing. So everything here that you're selecting is using CSS. So you can select by tags, by IDs, etc, etc. So with all my settings complete, I click run and every time I click on the name of this task, it will open up the task log and I can read, see what it has done. So it's read and found the page and it's wrote it to my hard drive, 47 kilobytes. If I want to preview that content, I click on the blue magnifying preview articles button. It will load it up into the preview article tool. So here's the source code and here's the preview in my browser. As you can see, all the HTML was actually removed from that page. And the reason why is, of course, I enabled HTML to text. If I removed that and ran it again, now that it's finished, once again, I preview it and you can see here, the content appears with my HTML tags in place.